Hi, I'm Becky Stromness, the UDOT Project Manager working on the Kimball Junction Environmental Impact Statement. UDOT is working on this to help improve transportation in the Kimball Junction area. At this phase of the environmental process, our team has refined and narrowed down the alternatives that were initially developed in the Kimball Junction and SR224 area plan that was completed back in 2021. Our team will be reviewing the criteria and measures for evaluating each alternative and explain the screening process about how we move alternatives forward or eliminate them. All of the figures you see in this presentation are available on the project website. I would like to quickly introduce some members of the project team who will be discussing the results of the report with me. Carissa Watanabe, UDOT Environmental Manager. Heidi Spohr, Environmental Lead. Kelly Johnston, Roadway Design Engineer. And Charles Allen, Traffic Engineer. So what is the purpose and need of a project? The purpose and need of a project defines a statement of goals and objectives that the study will address and identifies the existing and future conditions that will need to be changed. The purpose and need drives the environmental study process and lays a foundation for the types of alternatives developed along with how we evaluate the alternatives. This graphic represents the environmental study process and the criteria we use to evaluate each of the alternatives to determine which of them will be considered for detailed evaluation in the next phase of the environmental study. We presented these to the community in 2023 and held a public comment period to get feedback on our methodology and the criteria and measures. It is important to keep in mind that the design and analysis of each of the proposed alternatives took into consideration currently adopted land use plans and growth assumptions, including all future developments proposed in the Kimball Junction area. We also considered compatibility with the SR224 BRT project, which is currently funded. Each of our alternatives will accommodate the new bus lanes in that project. Now I'd like to take some time to review the alternatives that we evaluated in our screening process and the changes we made since the last time you saw them at our scoping public meeting in 2023. Based on input from the past two public comment periods we held, our team made some design refinements to the alternatives we showed you at our public scoping meeting last year, which came from the 2021 Kimball Junction Area Plan. First, we'll take a look at Alternative A. This alternative consists of a split diamond interchange configuration on I-80 with intersection and pedestrian improvements on SR-224. The existing single point urban interchange, also known as a SPUI at Kimball Junction, would be converted into a tight diamond configuration, meaning traffic signals at each off-ramp and the interchange traffic would be split between the existing location at SR-224 and a new intersection with a bridge crossing I-80 located to the west of SR-224. The split diamond interchange would disperse traffic between the new access and SR-224 by providing easier access to residential and commercial locations in the Kimball Junction area. One-way frontage roads for both eastbound and westbound directions would connect the two intersections and tie into the on and off ramps for I-80. The shared use path on the south side of I-80 would continue in the future for pedestrian comfort. A pedestrian undercrossing at Ute Boulevard and intersection improvements along SR-224 are proposed to move all users more efficiently through the area. Intersection improvements include adding northbound and southbound through lanes on SR-224 between Olympic Parkway and I-80. Kelly, our roadway design engineer, will walk you through the updates that we made to each of the three alternatives we put through our screening process, starting with Alternative A. Updates were made around the new western interchange. The frontage road realignment length was reduced. Refined engineering pulled the ramp and the existing frontage road closer together and reduced reconstruction impacts. With the frontage road updates, the roundabout at the outlet mall is now kept in its existing location. Turn lanes were added on the frontage roads at the new bridge. Traffic analysis determined that more turn lanes were needed to optimize flow through the intersections and to accommodate the turning paths of large vehicles. There were some minor turn lane reconfigurations at the SPUI with minimal pavement differences. Some of the unused space on the existing bridge was utilized by adding an additional northbound through lane. 
Traffic analysis determined that right turn lane configuration from the off-ramp needed to be updated. Free right turns were added for the eastbound on-ramp and off-ramp. The roundabout at Ute and Landmark was replaced with a signalized intersection. The conceptual design didn't include analyzing the roundabouts. With more traffic analysis, the roundabout was found to be failing from the extra traffic from the new half interchange. It was converted to a signalized intersection and operates acceptably. The north-south trail between Ute and Olympic is pushed farther away from SR224 to make room for the ramp down to the proposed pedestrian undercrossing south of Ute. Design refinements included undercrossing profiles with existing surface contours. The elevation differences between SR224 and the side trails required extending the ramps from the previous concept. Bridge footprints were looked at and have a larger impact. The future BRT lanes at the intersection of SR224 and Olympic were incorporated into the design because the details of BRT routing were not yet identified during scoping. A new trail connection was added to the southeast corner at Olympic Parkway. This was added during partner and UDOT discussions to help with pedestrian connectivity by reducing the walk distance from the crosswalks to the existing pedestrian undercrossing. The roundabouts were analyzed. A new lane is added eastbound from SR224 to the Olympic roundabout, and it ends in a right turn only. The conceptual design didn't include analyzing the roundabouts. The conceptual design had the dual left turn lane from southbound SR224 to eastbound Olympic drop into a right turn only early on, but it didn't work with future traffic modeling due to the volumes and the short merge length. We continued the new lane all the way to the roundabout for more merging distance. Now we'll take a look at alternative B. This alternative consists of grade separated intersections at U Boulevard and Olympic Parkway that would help separate local and through traffic in the area. SR224 would remain at or close to its current location horizontally, but would be depressed below the surface streets through Kimball Junction. Entrance ramps would diverge from SR224 to create a one-way frontage road system. Vehicles heading northbound from SR224 to I-80 eastbound would exit onto the northbound frontage road south of Olympic Boulevard to continue north and use the existing on-ramp. The existing pedestrian undercrossing south of Olympic Parkway would be relocated. Olympic Parkway and Ute Boulevard would tie into the frontage road system at intersections crossing over SR-224 on bridges. A dual right turn lane was added to the eastbound on-ramp due to traffic analysis. A third lane was added from the spooey. The dual right turn lane feeds the existing lane and the new lane, and the left turn lane feeds the other existing lane. The lanes drop as they enter I-80. A barrier is needed around the existing culvert due to this widening. The structural condition of the existing culvert is unknown. There were minor turn lane reconfigurations at the spooey with minimal pavement difference. This includes turn lane updates on SR224 for the dual right turn onto the eastbound on-ramp mentioned previously. This also includes updating the right turn lane configuration from the eastbound off-ramp to SR224 to better accommodate traffic entering the depressed roadway. Turning and through lane configurations were updated at both Ute and Olympic. From traffic analysis and further analysis of the closely spaced intersections over SR224, it was determined that the intersection spacing presents problems to traffic operations and roadway geometry. Several additional options were looked at but didn't work due to traffic or geometry problems. These include roundabouts, which failed traffic, a through spooey, which had traffic issues and also geometry problems, as well as separated or offset left turn lanes, which had a very large footprint along the cross streets and had more business impacts. The intersections are now drawn as a single wide intersection with split phasing and left turns sharing reversible lanes in the center median. Additional turn and through lanes were needed on the frontage roads due to delays caused by the split signal phasing of the new wide intersections and to prevent queuing into the adjacent existing roundabouts. The roundabout at Ute and Landmark has a new lane added to the southern approach. The roundabouts weren't originally included in the conceptual design. With more traffic analysis, the roundabout was found to be failing from extra traffic in the future and the extra turn lane was needed.
As previously mentioned, lane configurations and intersections were updated at both Ute and Olympic. At Olympic, the future BRT lanes at the intersection with SR224 were incorporated into the design because the details of BRT routing were not yet identified during scoping. The location and trail tie-ins for the pedestrian undercrossing relocation south of Olympic was refined. Crossing location and ramps were updated with profiles and existing terrain data. The exit from northbound SR224 onto the northbound frontage road was updated into a dual lane exit. Traffic analysis shows a two lane exit to the frontage road is more efficient than a one lane exit and reduces the queue length at the Olympic signal. Finally, let's take a look at alternative C. This alternative consists of additional through travel lanes, additional turn lanes at the intersection to improve intersection efficiency, and improvements for pedestrian and bicycle accessibility. Improvements include adding dual left turn lanes at Olympic Parkway for southbound to eastbound and northbound to westbound movement, and building a pedestrian undercrossing south of Ute Boulevard. This option would also include adding an additional northbound and southbound lane on SR224 from Olympic Parkway to Ute Boulevard, along with the extending the westbound to northbound right turn lanes on New Park Boulevard and extending the eastbound to northbound dual left turn lanes on Ute Boulevard. A dual right turn lane was added to the eastbound on-ramp due to traffic analysis. A third lane was added to the on-ramp from the spooey. The dual right turn feeds the existing lane and the new lane, and the left turn lane feeds the other existing lane. The lanes drop as they enter I-80. A barrier is needed around the existing creek culvert due to this widening. The structural condition of the existing culvert is unknown. This refinement is also seen in Alternative A. There was a minor turn lane reconfiguration at the spooey with minimal pavement difference. Traffic analysis determined that dual right turn lanes to the eastbound on-ramp were needed. The right turn lane configuration from the eastbound off-ramp was also updated to better accommodate traffic approaching Ute Boulevard. The triple left turn to westbound I-80 was found to not be needed and was removed. The roundabout at Ute and Landmark has a new lane added to the southern approach. The roundabouts were included in the conceptual design. With more traffic analysis, the roundabout was found to be failing from extra traffic in the future and the extra turn lane was needed. This refinement is also seen on alternative B. The combined through and right turn lanes at Uton Olympic have become right turn lanes with a separated through lane. Further traffic analysis and inclusion of the adjacent roundabouts found that additional capacity improvements were needed there. The east-west crosswalks were removed at Ute and Olympic. Traffic delay at the signals from the crosswalks was causing delay and both crossing locations are proposed to have east-west pedestrian undercrossings, so the crosswalks removed and pedestrian traffic would be redirected to the undercrossings. The north-south trail between Ute and Olympic is pushed farther away from SR224 to make room for the pedestrian undercrossing ramps. The undercrossing location and tie-ins were estimated during the conceptual design phase. When undercrossing profiles were complete, the elevation differences between SR224 and the side trails were larger than expected and the ramps needed to be extended. This same refinement was made in Alternative A as well. The future BRT lanes at the intersection of SR224 and Olympic were incorporated into the design because the details of BRT routing were not yet identified during scoping. A new trail connection was added to the southeast corner at Olympic Parkway. This was added during partner and UDOT discussions to help with pedestrian connectivity by reducing the walk distance from the crosswalks to the pedestrian undercrossing. Improved access to the east-west undercrossing was extra important for Alternative C due to the removal of the east-west crosswalks on SR224. The roundabouts were analyzed. A new lane is added eastbound from SR224 to the Olympic roundabout. It ends in a right turn only at the roundabout. The conceptual design didn't include analyzing the roundabouts. The conceptual design had the dual left turn lane drop into a right turn only lane much closer to the intersection, but it didn't work with further traffic modeling due to the volumes and the short merge length. We continued the new lane all the way to the roundabout for more merging distance. The same refinement is also seen in alternative A. Now that we have reviewed the details of the design refinements, Let's discuss how the alternatives have been screened. 
The Level 3 screening criteria are based entirely on the project's purpose and need. It is important to note that no single Level 3 screening criterion is more important than another. In Level 3 screening, criteria and measures used for vehicle traffic are equally as important as criteria and measures used for active transportation and transit. An alternative must pass each measure to move forward in the screening process. The 2050 No Action Measurement is used as the basis, meaning the performance of each alternative needs to be better than the modeled transportation conditions in 2050 if no improvements are made to the Kimball Junction interchange. The Level 3 screening included criteria related to vehicle travel times, intersection level of service, the percent vehicle served, length of vehicle queues, level of traffic stress, pedestrian walk times, and also transit travel times. I'll talk about each one of these in detail before we get to the results. First, vehicle travel times represents the amount of time it takes a driver to travel from I-80 through the Kimball Junction area along 220, SR-224 to the south. And it also measures the reverse trip traveling from SR-224 through Kimball Junction and back onto I-80. Intersection level service is a measurement of the amount of vehicle delay that drivers experience moving through a signalized intersection. This is measured on an A to F scale with level service A representing the best conditions and level service F representing the worst conditions. We try to achieve level service D for as many intersections as possible. Percent served is a measurement of how many vehicles coded into the traffic simulation model are able to move through the model. A number less than 100% indicates that there is congestion or bottlenecks in our traffic simulation model, and some of the other traffic metrics are not fully capturing all of the delay and congestion that occurs. The length of vehicle queue is a measurement of how long queues are on the I-80 off-ramps. When queues extend all the way up the ramp onto the I-80 main line, that represents a significant safety concern. Level of traffic stress is a measurement of the amount of comfort that pedestrians and cyclists experience in the Kimball Junction area. We report this metric for roadways as well as intersections. Walk times measures the amount of time it takes for a pedestrian to walk from one side of Kimball Junction, crossing SR-224 to the other. And we've identified four origin destination pairs that we measure this walk time for, and we add all those times together. The transit travel time represents the amount of time it takes the bus rapid transit or BRT vehicle to travel into the Kimball Junction Transit Center and back out again. So here are the results of the level three screening criteria analysis. We'll take a look at each of these metrics one by one. First, with vehicle travel times, we can see from this table that vehicle travel times worsen from six to seven minutes in existing conditions to about nine to 11 minutes in the 2050 no action condition. Now, each of the action alternatives improves these travel times by about two to four minutes. Looking at intersection level service, several intersections have level service E or F for existing and for 2050 no action conditions. And again, each action alternative experiences drastic improvements. Most intersections are able to get to level service D or better. For the percent served metric, both existing conditions and 2050 no action conditions are less than 100%. And again, all action alternatives are able to improve that to 100%. For vehicle queues, there are very long vehicle queues at the I-80 off-ramps for existing conditions, which worsen considerably in the 2050 no action condition. Each action alternative reduces the vehicle queues to a level where there's no longer backing onto the I-80 mainline. The total BRT travel time traveling in and out of the Kimball Junction area is about 16 minutes under the 2050 no action alternative. All alternatives reduce the BRT travel time by about two minutes. For level of traffic stress, there are several trails which provide a low stress environment, which is level of traffic stress one. 
Major Kimball Junction intersections operate at level traffic stress three due to the number of lanes required to cross these intersections. Alternatives A and C offer the new pedestrian undercrossing near Ute Boulevard, which provides a new level of traffic stress one method of crossing SR224. Alternative B does not provide an undercrossing, and so the intersection level of traffic stress remains at level of traffic stress three. The trails in the region remain at level traffic stress one for all alternatives. For walk times, the total walk times for all four origin destination pairs, which is back and forth across SR224 in both directions, is about 53 minutes. This gets a little longer for the 2050 no action scenario. Then alternative A and alternative C offer a travel time savings of 15 seconds to one and a half minutes. Alternative B results in longer pedestrian travel times. In summary, all alternatives meet the purpose and need for the vehicular-based metrics. Vehicle travel times, vehicle queues, percent served, and intersection level service all improve from existing and 2050 no action conditions. There are some slight differences from alternative to alternative. Alternative A has slightly slower vehicle travel times compared to other alternatives. Alternative B has better vehicle travel times and speeds compared to other alternatives. Alternative C has shorter I-80 ramp queues than the other alternatives. It is important to note that alternative B does not meet the purpose and need for level of traffic stress and pedestrian walk time criteria. The level of traffic stress does not improve over existing and 2050 no action conditions. Likewise, Alternative B has a negative effect on pedestrian walk times compared to existing and 2050 no action conditions. Level four screening criteria eliminated alternatives that meet the purpose and need, but would have unreasonable impacts on the natural and human environment, would not meet regulatory requirements, or could be replaced by a less costly concept with similar impacts. Our environmental lead, Heidi, We'll talk a little more about the criteria we use at this level and the impacts associated with each of the alternatives. The overall steps for level four screening included estimating the impacts on key resources of each refined alternative, evaluating the alternative's costs, considering additional logistical considerations and overall feasibility, and determining whether any of the alternatives would have substantially greater impacts or costs without having substantially greater benefits in meeting the purpose of the project. For land use, when reviewing the Summit County's Kimball Junction Neighborhood Master Plan as part of Level 4 screening, UDOT considered consistency with several opportunities in the plan related to multimodal transportation, including improving the flow of the regional through traffic and improving overall neighborhood connectivity and walkability. All three alternatives meet the goal of improving the flow of regional through traffic, as shown in the level three screening results. Alternatives A and C would both add a new proposed pedestrian tunnel under Ute Boulevard, and therefore, combined with the existing pedestrian tunnel at Olympic Parkway, would further help connect the neighborhoods on each side of SR224 and enhance walkability in the area. Alternative B would be partially compatible with the Kimball Junction neighborhood plan, but would not improve pedestrian and bicyclist connections as well as alternatives A and C because of the wider cross-section of the alternative B footprint. None of the refined alternatives would disrupt current land uses or future proposed zoning designations, though all three alternatives would convert some land zoned for non-transportation uses to a transportation use. Alternative B would have the most impact on commercially zoned properties and would convert the most land not currently zoned for transportation use into a transportation use. Another key resource UDOT considered were impacts to threatened and endangered species. All three refined alternatives are substantially the same in terms of their impacts to threatened and endangered species. Alternative A would have no impacts, while alternatives B and C would have a negligible impact to threatened and endangered species habitat. Waters of the United States was another screening criteria and are protected by Section 404 of the Clean Water Act. 
Wetland delineation fieldwork was finalized in the summer and fall of 2023 and is based on wetland delineation data that were collected in accordance with applicable U.S. Army Corps of Engineers delineation standards. Although the refined alternatives A and B would substantially be the same in terms of their impacts to waters of the U.S., alternative B would have about 0.05 acre more impacts. Alternative C would have the smallest impacts to waters of the U.S. at 0.012 acre. Although there is no threshold for jurisdictional status, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers typically considers impacts under half an acre to be minimal if mitigation is incorporated, if required. Section 4F applies to publicly owned parks, recreation areas, and wildlife and waterfowl refuges, as well as publicly or privately owned significant historic properties. The requirements of Section 4F apply only to agencies within the U.S. Department of Transportation, such as federal highways. None of the alternatives would have a Section 4F use. Finally, UDA analyzed each alternative for its potential impacts to residential and commercial property, which are included in the cost estimate of each alternative. For screening purposes, relocations were identified as properties with large potential impacts where the alternative would intersect with structures on the parcel and change the primary use, access, or function of the parcel, or there would be no usable remainder. Alternatives A and C have minor right-of-way impacts, while alternative B would require three full business relocations. The construction cost was estimated at a high level for each alternative using standard assumptions of cost per lane mile and per acre of right-of-way. Two alternatives, refined alternative A and C, passed level four screening and are being advanced for detailed impacts analysis in the draft EIS. Alternative B did not meet the purpose and did not pass level three screening. However, it was carried forward in level four screening for comparison. Refined alternative B was not advanced for further evaluation in the draft EIS because it does not meet the purpose of the project. It failed level three screening for pedestrian and bicyclist mobility and comfort. It also would have had the most waters of the US impacts the most property impacts, and the highest cost without substantially greater benefits in comparison to the other two options. After over a year of reviewing traffic data and working with our engineers to make improvements to the original concepts, we have two options moving forward that will help people living in and visiting Kimball Junction reach their destinations more efficiently as the area continues to grow. After this phase of the process wraps up, the next step in the environmental study is publishing the draft EIS estimated for this summer. The draft EIS will include a detailed evaluation of the two alternatives moving forward, including impacts to land use and open space, communities and neighborhoods, residential and commercial properties, noise, air quality, water resources, and special status species, among other resource impacts. The study team will evaluate the alternatives against the range of impacts and traffic performance measures to select a preferred alternative. So we are asking for public input on our screening process, the initial impact analysis in our report, the alternatives we're advancing for detailed evaluation in the draft EIS, and any new options the community would like us to consider. Formal comments may be submitted through a variety of methods shown on the screen and will be accepted through March 27th. And just a reminder that commenting is not a vote. We don't tally the comments as yes or no votes, as the environmental study process that we follow for all of our studies is not a public referendum. Rather, public comments provide opportunities for us to improve the document and make sure it's thorough, accurate, and complete. But they're not the only factor in UDOT's decision-making process. Thank you again for taking time to learn about our project and the potential transportation improvements UDOT is considering in the Kimball Junction area. We appreciate the time the community has spent sharing your ideas with us and providing feedback during the comment periods. Your comments make sure our analysis is accurate and help inform our decision making. Thank you again, and I hope you'll spend some time to review the materials on the project website and submit a comment.